I get a lot of questions about Watchlet Plus toilets. At many bidets, we sell over a hundred different SKUs when it comes to Watchlet Plus toilets, so it can be overwhelming. Today, we're going to simplify things for you. We're gonna talk about one piece versus two piece, skirted versus non-skirted, and also about multiple different flush variations from side flush to top flush. Stay tuned to learn about all of this. My name is Daniel Johnson. I'm your bidet expert, and I'm the owner of ManyBidets.com, where over the past eight years, we've sold over 10,000 bidets. Before we talk about how to pick a Washlet Plus toilet bidet combination, it's important to know what a Washlet Plus is. So, here we have two Toto toilets, along with two Toto bidet seats. In fact, these bidet seats are both S550Es. Same feature set, same internals. But one's Washlet Plus and one's not. On this combination, we can see the cord and the hose. On this combination, we can't. So why do we see it on one and not the other? Because this unit is a Washlet Plus unit. So if we take this seat off, we can see that there's a hole built into the porcelain. This hole allows us to route the cord and the hose through the hole in order to keep them concealed. The position of the cord and the hose on this seat is also designed in such a way to make the process of sliding it through the hole seamless. The one other thing to note here is that with a Washlet Plus unit, you can also add in an extra adapter that gives you auto flush capability. So a unit like this is sleeker and has the ability to offer auto flushing where it flushes when you stand up versus a unit like this, you see the cord in the hose and you don't have that capability. From an aesthetic standpoint, one of the main differences between the Washlet Plus lineup is skirted versus non-skirted. Here, we see a non-skirted toilet. We see that the trap and the, uh, the entire waist line, if you will, is visible because of the way the toilet's designed. The other thing that you'll notice is that while it has a hole to hide the cord and the hose, it's not quite as hidden because that hole is still visible from the bottom. So it's not gonna be quite as sleek as a skirted toilet. Here, we have a partially skirted toilet. So the side of the toilet does not expose the drain, uh, does not expose the, uh, the pipe where the waste goes through. It's smooth. Along with that, we have a little porcelain plate that goes over the bolt holes where the toilet attaches to the floor. Uh, this little plate covers up that hole and makes it so that the, uh, the toilet is now fully skirted and it just gives it a sleeker, cleaner look. Here, we have a fully skirted toilet. So we can see the entire side of this toilet is completely porcelain, smooth, no, uh, no visible uh, drain pipe or anything along those lines. And to connect this toilet to the floor, it uses a slightly different mechanism than the last two, which we'll talk about more in a moment. Now there's more to skirted versus non-skirted than simply the aesthetics aspect. So with a non-skirted toilet, these bolt holes go over where the flange is, is placed in the floor. So two bolts come up from the flange, go through these bolt holes on either side, and a nut's put on top. That works just fine. The limitation comes from the fact that if we don't have 12 inches from the center of that flange to the back wall, known as a 12 inch rough in, this toilet's not going to fit because the positioning of these holes can't change, nor can the positioning of the flange change without some extensive work. So if you have this toilet and you're looking to put it in on a house that has a 10 inch rough end, you're gonna have problems unless you get a different toilet. Now let's talk about a partially skirted toilet 
and how that differs. With a partially skirted toilet, we install a flange adapter on the flange. So the bolts that come up from the flange go through these holes here. And this then gets bolted to the floor and screwed into the floor here in the back as well. Once that's done, the two grooves here have bolts that get put in them. So then those bolts that come through the back of that flange adapter come up through the holes here where the nuts tighten it down. This rubber gasket connects to the porcelain on the bottom side of this toilet where there's just a porcelain pipe that comes out and fits into this hole. So it's a little bit different in that respect as well. Once you bolt it down, you can put the cover on and you're good to go. Now the beautiful thing about this design is the fact that now we have wiggle room for multiple different rough-ins. So both of these flange adapters work with this toilet. What you'll notice is that they're different lengths, two inches different to be exact, and the bottom portion, the big round circle where it connects to the flange, is a different length from the disposal hole that the toilet provides. So with our first toilet, the non-skirted toilet, we were going to be in trouble in a scenario where we weren't dealing with a 12 inch rough in. With this skirted toilet, however, if we end up not having a 12 inch rough in, we just buy an additional adapter that gives us either a 10 or 14 inch rough in by adjusting the difference in distance from the flange to the drain hole. Lastly, let's take a look at a fully skirted toilet. It utilizes the same design as far as the flange adapter, but you'll notice there's no bolt holes in the back here to mount this toilet to the floor. You will notice we have two screw holes at the top. So bolts come through the flange here and nuts tighten it down. And then in the back, we screw it into the floor to keep this sturdy and steady but there's nowhere to attach the toilet to the flange adapter. In this scenario, we mount these brackets on the floor inside of the toilet base. So before we install the toilet, we use a template that Toto provides to tell us exactly where to mount these, these brackets and then after they're mounted, we place the toilet on top. Once we've done that, this bracket is going to sit right inside of this hole where we can screw a screw through the hole into this bracket to hold the toilet in place and then cover it with a white cap. One other difference between Washlet Plus systems is the flushing style. You might have a side flush, which are the majority of Toto's Washlet Plus units, or you might have a top button flush, which is available currently on Toto's Aquia 4 lineup, but might be available in other Washlet Plus units down the road as Toto's always releasing new options to the market. When it comes to either of these designs, either of these can offer a dual flush mechanism, a larger flush and a smaller flush. The side control or the side flush often offers only a single flush option as well, so keep that in mind. It's important to know the differences between these two units so that you know when you're getting the auto flush kit that you're getting the proper kit, as it has to be compatible with these internals. It's also important to note that when you're getting any of these Washlet Plus units, in order to get auto flushing, that's a separate kit. It can be paired with any of the units, but it doesn't necessarily come automatically with those units. Because these toilets are specifically designed to work with a Toto Washlet Plus bidet seat, they are designed in such a way to have auto flushing work with the appropriate kit. From time to time, we get customers purchase a Toto Washlet seat and try to get it to pair with an auto flush kit but if it's not an auto flush capable toilet, i.e. a Washlet Plus toilet, you're going to have issues on that front because that auto flush kit has to tie to 
the apparatus in the tank that makes that whole system work. We also have differences between one-piece and two-piece toilets. So this would be a one-piece toilet. In other words, it's one solid piece of ceramic. This would be a two-piece toilet. The tank comes off of the bowl. In order to keep the tank in place, you would use a couple of bolts that come with it to mount the two together. So what are the benefits to a one-piece versus a two-piece toilet? Well, for starters, the one-piece toilet is more expensive. So if you're trying to keep costs down, the two-piece toilet might be a good way to go. But aside from that, the one-piece toilet is going to be easier to clean because there's not an additional seam back here that can collect dirt and dust and those sorts of things. The one-piece toilet is a little bit harder to install because you have to lift the whole thing in one go versus lifting the bowl into place and then putting the tank on top after the bowl's installed. So there is that aspect as well. So when, it's, when, it, when you boil it down, it really just depends on what you're looking for. Is the, the additional sleekness that you're getting here along with the additional ease of cleaning worth the extra money? Or would you prefer something that's a little bit easier to install that is going to be a little bit less expensive as well? So in this video, we've talked about the toilet portion of a Washlet Plus unit. But it's important to note that the toilet is only part of the Washlet Plus setup. You also need the bidet seat. And with any of the different toilets that Toto provides as part of a Washlet Plus setup, of which there are dozens, you can pair a variety of different Toto bidet seats with those. So as an example, if we were to take this exact toilet, we could pair this with a Washlet Plus version of the S550E Washlet seat, the S500 Washlet seat, the C5 Washlet seat, the C2 Washlet seat. So even though this is only one toilet, when it comes to a Washlet Plus model or SKU, there are at least four different SKUs for this exact toilet, just depending on what bidet seat you pair it with. This might sound overwhelming, but we've done our best to help you narrow down exactly what you need. This video helps you with the toilet portion, but in the video description, you'll find a link where you can request our Washlet Plus Buyer's Guide that not only talks about the toilets like we've talked about today, but also talks about the differences between the Washlet seats themselves. Knowing the combinations between the two will help you narrow it down to the exact unit you need. But along with that, we have staff that is well versed in all things Washlet Plus. So feel free to reach out to us via any means you see fit, text, email, phone call, etc., in order to get that assistance and help you find the exact unit you need. Our website is also listed down below and you can find all of our contact information in the video description as well. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to comment on this video if you like what you saw, but also if you have questions, maybe there's something that we didn't address that you'd like to see addressed so that we know what videos to make next and consider making your next purchase from minibidets.com so that we can continue creating great content like this. Minibidets.com, where we sell mini bidets, not mini bidets.